This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I do want to wish you all a very happy new year. A friend sent me uh, something that I want to share with you this morning as we get started. I thought this was, was really pretty good as we, uh, as we take flight here and head into the year 2022. You ready to, you ready to take flight? It goes like this. Welcome to Flight 2022. We are prepared to take off into the new year. Please make sure your positive attitude and gratitude are secured and locked in the upright position. All self-destructive devices, selfishness, anger, resentment, and worry should be turned off at this time. All negativity, fear, and discouragement should be put away. Should you lose your positive attitude under pressure during this flight, reach to prayer directly above you. Prayers will automatically be activated by faith. Once your faith is activated, you can assist other passengers who are of little faith. There will be no baggage allowed on this flight. God, our captain, has cleared us for takeoff, wishing you a new year filled with new hope, new joy, and new beginnings. Stay blessed and welcome to Flight 2022. Our Father God, we want to thank you for this new day and for this new year. I ask that you would help us to uh, lay aside the hurts and the failures of the past, not to continue to try to live off the successes or the achievements of the past year, but uh, to look to you now in this moment, and to look toward the future with confidence and hope through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May everything that is said and done here today be to the honor and glory of God alone. May we be better, braver, more beautiful people for the experience of sharing life together in worship and fellowship today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Reading from Psalm 119, starting in verse 97. Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. I have refused to walk on any evil path so that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. As we just uh, join together this morning in worship, we just invite you to reflect on the goodness of God. It's been quite a year, some highs and some lows I feel like even as a church and and as a society even general just that we've been through some refining fires but what comes out of refining fires is that pure lovely gold and I just pray that as we worship this morning that we see that God has been good and that that the fruit after refining is something very beautiful you're welcome to stand, you're welcome to sit, just, uh, just worship together. I love you, Lord, oh, your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God.
Oh, oh. 
is rising. Hope is rising like the sun. The old is gone, the new has come. Fix my eyes on Christ alone. My rock, my shield, my cornerstone.
It's great, isn't it, to be able to enjoy the, uh, the Christmas decorations and the beautiful Advent candles one more Sunday. I'm glad that they're still here with us. Before we dismiss the children to junior church, we're just going to uh, say a prayer of blessing for you. Father God, as the children go to their special time of learning, worship, may they receive a blessing from you. They're the next generation of this church and an important part of the congregation today. So be with them and be with their leaders. For Jesus' sake, amen. All right, kids, you can head on down for junior church. All right. I would like to read three passages of Scripture with you today. You may notice that uh, all of these scriptures, including the psalm that was read for us earlier, have something to say about wisdom. And wisdom is something that's uh, sorely needed and uh, very important as we head into this new year. First of all, I want to read to you from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, picking it up in verse 4. It's talking about King Solomon, and it goes like this. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, 
You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duty. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me, and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke, and he realized it had been a dream. And now we're going to read from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, and verses 3 through 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. And now from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, picking it up with verse 40. And the child Jesus grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son! Why have you treated us like this? 
your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of our Lord. As we begin a new year, it is important that we live fully every day. But it is equally important that we do not live only for today. We need to believe in tomorrow in order to live well today. Determine that you will live life to the full today with an eye to the future. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Well, 2021 is over. Once we pass through that door, there's no going back. It's simply past. And... Uh, we need to be careful because too many of us are stuck in the past, dwelling on past hurts and failures, or trying to live off of past successes and victories. This is what God's Word says. Forget what happened in the past, and do not dwell on events from long ago. I am going to do something new. It is already happening. Don't you recognize it? I will clear a way in the desert. I will make rivers on dry land. Wow. Now, does, does that mean that you are never to recall or reflect upon past experiences? Certainly not. The lessons that you have learned in the past year will help you to make better distinctions going forward. Rather, it's a matter of focus. It's kind of like driving a car. When you're driving a, an automobile, it is important to check your rear view mirror periodically. But you will never get where you're going if you are looking in the rear view mirror all the time. The Apostle Paul put it this way. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Regardless of your age, whether you are young or whether you are older, it is important that you look to the future. Where there is no future, there is no hope. Hope pulls us forward into the future. One of the things that distinguishes human beings from other created life is our awareness of the future. My yellow Labrador, Harley, is a great dog. But he lives only for the moment. He wants to eat. He wants to be petted. And for sure, he wants to go for a walk. He is content with surviving. And that's the way it is with all the animals, the insects, the reptiles, the amphibians, the birds, even other mammals. They just want to survive. But that's not enough for human beings. Human beings are not content simply to survive. We want to thrive. We want to experience things. We want to achieve things. We want to have relationships that are meaningful. And we have a need for progress. Progress is natural, but it isn't automatic. The future doesn't just happen. It is created. The life that you will live in the future is the result of decisions 
that you make today. If we are honest, we will admit that many of the problems that we have in life are the result of decisions that we have made or that we failed to make. To make good decisions, which will enable us to thrive in the future, requires wisdom. Wisdom. So let's talk about wisdom. Wisdom is the quality of having good judgment and the ability to make right moral choices and then to act on them. Real wisdom comes from a relationship with God that is real and personal. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Solomon, King Solomon, had a dream, but it was no ordinary dream. The scripture says that God came to him in a dream. And God gave him an offer that is absolutely incredible. Ask whatever you will. I wonder if God asked you that question, what you would ask for. Solomon didn't ask for great wealth or for fame or for victory over his enemies or for a long life. He asked for wisdom and discernment to carry out his duties. And scripture tells us that God was pleased with Solomon's request. And God said, I will do for you what you have asked. You know, the Bible tells us that we have not because we do not ask. And when we do ask, we ask with wrong motives. So wisdom is necessitated here. God says, I will do for you what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Wow. What a, what a statement. And Solomon has gone down in history as the wisest man who ever lived. God gave him what he asked for. But God also gave him what he did not ask for. Wealth, fame, victory, and a long life. Wisdom is such an incredibly important component of building a successful future. The book of James tells us, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. We tend to think that we need godly wisdom only for the really big decisions in life. Like, what career path should I follow? What home should I buy or where should we live? And for sure, whom should I marry? And those decisions are critical. They're biggies. But wisdom is also needed to make many small decisions. They seem small, but small decisions can affect the trajectory of your entire life. Perhaps you are familiar with the concept known as the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect tells us that small and seemingly insignificant changes can set in motion a chain of events with far-reaching consequences. Let me give you an example. I was in my final year of high school, 
at the Delisle Composite School when I participated in a school drama, a play that we put on for the community. I still remember the name of the play. It was a comedy. It was called Flipped. Flipped. Flipped stood for Feminine Liberation Idealist Party for Permanent Equality and Democracy. And we had a lot of fun practicing and preparing to put on that play. In fact, it went over so well to a packed auditorium that they scheduled a second night and uh, filled up the auditorium a second time with people who wanted to come and see that play. After the presentation of that drama, somebody thought we should have a cast party. And we went to the home of one of the girls who was a part of the uh, drama. When we got to that home, I discovered that uh, there were no parents present. It was just a bunch of teenagers. And it wasn't very long before somebody uh, got at the idea that, uh, that we should get into the liquor cabinet. And uh, somebody else picked that up and uh, I could see where that was going and, and there was a real temptation to just keep quiet, but I couldn't do that. And I said, you know, that's I want to participate in. And when I said that, surprise, surprise, several others said that as well. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to get involved in an underage drinking party. And uh, so it, it went in a completely different direction. Ended up being a, a very wholesome evening. But I, I couldn't help thinking that just a small decision at that point, made differently, could have set my life in a whole different direction. There was one other uh, thing that, that came out of that drama that had a long-term effect. One of the characters in that play was a young woman by the name of Nicolette. I had never heard the name Nicolette before. And I was so impressed. I thought, what a pretty sounding name. If I ever have a daughter, I'd like to name her Nicolette. And uh, that's what we did. A few years later, when we had uh, married and had kids, we named our daughter Nicolette. And uh, my wife was pleased to go along with that suggestion on the condition that she could choose the second name. And she chose a name that came from a book series which she enjoyed as a young person about Emily Bird Starr. Her second name, our daughter's second name is Starr, spelt with two R's. Nicolette Starr. At that time it was Anderson, now it's Hennig. During her final year of high school, our daughter was uh, selected, given the privilege of going as a exchange student to South Africa. And uh, she was uh, assigned to live in a town called Bethlehem in South Africa. So when she was about to leave for her trip for a year, we had a going away party and uh, we had a banner which said, Bon Voyage to the Star of Bethlehem. You see, small things can have long-term effects. So you need to ask God for wisdom to handle the ordinary things of life, not just the big decisions. And scripture lays out for us instructions about how to live in the everyday. In fact, sometimes we have the temptation to think that if there's a really big crisis, we'll call on God for wisdom to handle that. But we might think that we can kind of handle the everyday stuff on our own. We need godly wisdom all the time. All right. Again, the butterfly effect is the recognition that small, seemingly insignificant things can have major differences down the road. But recently, I was introduced to another concept 
known as the bumblebee effect. You know what the bumblebee effect is? Physics tells us that bumblebees, or really bees of any kind, should not be able to fly. That their body mass is too much for the size of their wings and the speed at which they're able to move them. Bees shouldn't be able to fly. But being a bee requires that they need to fly. And so they, they fly. This is the bumblebee effect. Great dreams can set in motion a chain of events resulting in a seemingly ordinary person living an extraordinary life. In other words, that a great dream can have the effect of making your life extraordinary. There is nothing more powerful than a God-inspired dream. When I say that, I want to distinguish that from the humanistic thinking that sometimes is common in our society. We hear things like this. If you can dream it, you can do it. You can be anything you want to be. Anything the mind of man can conceive, it can achieve. Well, I hate to break your bubble, but that is just not so. I can dream of lots of things that couldn't possibly happen. I can dream of scoring the winning goal in overtime, game seven of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But that is not within the realm of possibility. It ain't gonna happen. But when God gives you an inspired dream, Amazing things can happen. What is impossible for people is possible with God. One of the best time investments that I made in the year 2021 was this. I read my Bible from cover to cover, every word, in a translation that I had not read before. It was a really good experience to go right through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. On the last day of 2021, I read the last few chapters of the book of Revelation, and I'd, I'd made it all the way through the book. Of course, I do a lot of other Bible reading beyond just that reading through Scripture, and I don't read through the Scripture in that way every year, although I've done it multiple times. But in the Bible, we find the source of godly wisdom. Scripture says, with all wisdom and understanding, God made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. One more thing about wisdom. It doesn't happen overnight. Wisdom is a growth process. When I was a young teenager, I remember sitting in the congregation one Sunday morning when our pastor wanted to make a point about growing strong. And uh, he said, it takes a hundred years to grow an oak tree, but only six months to grow a squash. And uh, when he said that, his wife, who was sitting in the congregation, spoke out loud and said, it only takes three months to grow a squash. <laughs> and of course, he was pretty embarrassed, and the whole congregation laughed. But I guess I never forgot. It takes time to grow strong, and it takes time to grow wise. It's fascinating to me that Scripture says that Jesus the Son of God who became human like us, that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor 
with God and man. Even Jesus needed to grow in wisdom as time went by. Now, one thing we need to remember is that uh, time is not unlimited. We all have only a finite amount of time. If you buy a gallon of milk, it comes with an expiration date. Now, in our house, it's never around long enough to go sour. But uh, we like milk. But milk left too long becomes sour. It's spoiled. It comes with an expiration date. So do we. We are all born with a terminal condition. Our time in this world is limited. And so wisdom demands that we live each day as if it may be your last. And if it is your last, make it your best. As you grow in wisdom, you will not only survive, but thrive in 2022 and throughout all of your life and through eternity with God in his heaven. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all right now, right here today, this month, throughout this day and this week, this month, and this year, all the way through your life and then through eternity with God in his heaven.